continuing the leadership style because I've had a lot of uh, like feedback in the last years that I don't know always. <laughs> I think everybody can always keep on growing and learning. Yeah. If you've noticed it about yourself and yeah. if you want to change it, really you, to yes, it. you can. I mean, I'm also usually the one who goes like, yeah. <laughs> it's hard, but just lean back and do Watch first, listen first. You also learn the other way around. Are there certain ways of learning, like also to definitely. Do this, to this situation? There are definitely techniques. Toastmasters is a very great example for people to learn to use their voice, to raise their voice also, because some people think they have no voice, which is one thing you learn in Toastmasters. Leadership skills you can learn also by taking up responsibility and by making mistakes. In Toastmasters you're allowed to, in business it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pascal. Sasha, Sasha. if you yeah, have... Because I think it's with A, but it's not, it's wrong. <laughs> Sorry. If you have one person that's been built up to a leader, but itself is a shy person, so this person is not going in front and suppressing other people. Do you still think such a, such a leader has still um, be quiet, or might such a person, um, well? It's, well, it's interesting in, because it, there's two aspects to it. A, the person has a title, so therefore he is the leader, the formal leader, the person in authority, let's say the president of the club or whatever. B, you say this person is naturally introvert or shy, doesn't speak up. All this means by nature this is a leader who's already silenced him or herself, who feels more comfortable in a being in the background. Depending on the culture, because that's the second, what I, what I would say, dimension to it, whether that is a shy person or not doesn't matter because it's a person of authority, and in my culture, the person of authority has the leadership power and will be regarded as the person to listen to independent of whether that person naturally does it or not. In other cultures, it doesn't matter if this person is naturally shy or remote, then it will make no, no difference. The important thing is that as a leader, sometimes you have to remove yourself physically if you are the leader, or as a team, you have to decide for the moment we are in this room build, doing the teamwork, everybody is equal. That would be the other th point where you say you stimulate critical thinking in everybody. How am I doing? One minute. One more question. I have a question. <laughs> Hello. Yes. <laughs> if, you, if you stop the leader, silence the leader, it might be okay. If he's a natural leader, he can influence the others. He can be demotivated and he can demotivate also the others. This can lead to a catastrophe. How do you mean? So you mean that if you, if the natural silence. leader is silenced, the <coughs> people then become negative? It will become negative, and uh, everything can become negative for the whole mm, world. Not necessarily. It has, to, it has to be done in a respectful way, not as in, you shut up now because you... I mean, if, if Doretta would be in the team, and if I would have stepped up and said, Doretta, you shut up now, she would have been, been unhappy, and she might have then vented her negative emotions. That would have to happen. She could have taken it sporty and say, yeah, yeah, you can go. But it, she could have taken it negatively. I'm thinking... If, if a person is the natural leader, it is leadership skill also to be able to sometimes stand back. But I understand it's a dilemma because it will not work in every situation. But if you want, if the aim of the group, if the aim of the team is to be productive, is to use the potential of every individual, then this is the only option. I think we were the final question, right? You, I'll be here the rest of the day and night. Okay, done.
You can do that. Stand there until it's all the way up.